Heavenly Father, we would see Jesus today. Heavenly Father, we would hear Jesus today. Heavenly Father, we would be moved to love and serve Jesus today. Amen. A rich man went to his vicar and said, I want you and your wife to take a three-month trip to the Holy Land at my expense. When you come back, I'll have a surprise for you. The vicar accepted the offer and he and his wife went off to the Middle East. Three months later, they returned home and were met by the wealthy parishioner who told them while they were gone, he had had a new church built. It's the finest building money can buy, vicar, said the man. No expense was spared. And he was right. It was a magnificent building inside and outside. But there was one striking difference. There was only one pew at the very back. A church with only one pew, said the vicar. You just wait until Sunday, said the rich man. When the time came for the Sunday service, the early arrivals entered the church, filed into the one pew and sat down. When the pew was full, a switch clicked silently. A circuit closed, the gears meshed, a belt moved and automatically the rear pew began to move forward. When it reached the front of the church, it came to a stop. At the same time, another empty pew came up from below at the back and more people sat down. And so it continued, pews filling and moving forwards until finally the church was full from front to back. Wonderful, said the vicar. Marvellous. The service began. The vicar started to preach his sermon. He launched into his text and when 12 o'clock came, he was still going strong with no end in sight. Suddenly, a bell rang. A trapdoor in the floor behind the pulpit dropped open. Wonderful, said the congregation. <laughs> Marvellous. I may drop out of sight. <laughs> With the feast of Christ the King, we come to the end of another church year. The picture of Christ as King we are given is as a powerful and majestic one. We honour the Lord Jesus today as a king whose kingdom is eternal in time, universal in scope and very personal in power. And that is the teaching of our readings. The first reading is from the Old Testament book of Daniel. It is a book that speaks to us just as much as it spoke to the Jewish people. The brutality of dictators, terrorist bombings, corruption in politics, cultural confusion and degradation all make us think that the world is out of control. The prophet Daniel found the same things in his time, but looked to God as the place to find spiritual security and salvation. Daniel the prophet saw not a kingdom, but an individual, a man, not a beast, coming from heaven. As the visions continued during the night, 
I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. And he was given final authority, glory and power. And in the end, all the nations worshipped him. And we know him as Jesus Christ. Empires have come and gone. Jesus Christ remains. The Roman Empire is gone. The Greek Empire is gone. The French Empire is gone. The Spanish Empire is gone. The Soviet Empire is gone. The Aztec Empire is gone. The British Empire is gone. The German Empire is gone. And the Japanese Empire is gone. The Ottoman Empire is gone. The Austro-Hungarian Empire is gone. And guess what? Jesus Christ remains. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? That's why we're here, because of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> when human history is finished, and after the collapse of every human kingdom, in the end, there will only be Jesus Christ. Only the kingdom of Christ is enduring and eternal. The book of Revelation, today's second reading goes further. It describes Jesus coming in glory. It says, Every eye shall see him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Maybe our focus is too Western. We tend to see the drama of sin and grace as something that happens only in our culture. The book of Revelation says that all the peoples will lament the piercing, the crucifixion of Christ, because the whole human race was part of it. We all sin. Murder and rape are not a Western phenomenon. Abuse, theft, slander, all the capital sins are found among the Incas, the American Indians, the Eskimos and even the Aborigines. Sin is a universal phenomenon. The sins of all people nailed Jesus to the cross. Sin is universal. And Jesus' redemption is universal as well. He died for all. And all salvation comes through him. There is no other avenue of spiritual healing and forgiveness for anyone. All the military and economic muscle of the world, all the ancient philosophies and holy people of world cultures combined cannot produce the spiritual healing and forgiveness that flows through one Holy Communion. Because the Holy Communion makes present the powerful, atoning sacrifice of Christ that redeems all people. In one part of my ministry, I had 10 years on the international stage, which I rather enjoyed, except for the long haul flights in cattle class, and I'm not small, but you do it. And one time I was in Florida with an Episcopalian lady who headed up this wonderful healing commitment, 
commitment ministry and she gave everything she could to that work in I think seven or eight countries in the world and she drove what I would think a fairly bomb car. It wasn't brand new. But her husband had been a high-ranking officer in the US Navy and she still had this badge on the windscreen and I think she wanted to teach me something about power and authority and we drove through the local naval base and when the young man saw the badge on the thing he went <laughs> <laughs> There is incredible power and authority in Jesus Okay, he's gentle Jesus, meek and mild, he's kind and what have you, but he's also ruler and full of power and authority and he's pretty wonderful, isn't he? And we all know him, don't we? If you don't know him, I'll pray with you at the end of the service so that I can introduce you. <coughs> Having a personal relationship with the living Lord Jesus doesn't mean that everything's going to be smooth all the time because it certainly isn't but my goodness he makes a difference he's someone we can turn to and cling to through whatever the Lord's kingdom is not only enduring but it's also universal it's wide enough strong enough to embrace, heal and bring forgiveness to every human being however they come to it. The kingdom of Jesus Christ is not only eternal but it is universal and his kingdom is also very personal. The kingdom of Jesus is not about castles, knights in armour and grand military battles. It is about the liberation of our soul from sin and about setting us one by one free to be the person God intends us to be. Jesus gives us the truth about our life, about ourselves, and about our future. And his truth will always set us free. The kingdom of Jesus Christ does not enslave <clears throat> but it sets us free. And Jesus said, my kingdom does not belong to this world. Its power is not from the world, but from the grace and life of the risen Christ. We are part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We entered it through baptism. Who's baptised here? Put your hand up. Children, put your hands up. I've baptised you. <laughs> Do you know, that's a privilege. There's lots of privileges in this earthly life. But thank God that you have been baptised. Because that's brought you into a relationship with the living Lord Jesus. <clears throat> We were made a stronger part of it through confirmation. We grow in it through confession and Holy Communion. We serve it through marriage and Holy Orders. We draw its resources in illness through the anointing of the sick. The Kingdom of Jesus Christ is a zone of strength, spiritual safety and moral power 
from whose resources we can draw during this life and in which we can live forever in the next. Guess what? I'll see some of you next time in heaven. Isn't that exciting? No more pain, no more suffering, no more parting. Uh, just glory and the love and radiance and beauty of Jesus in charge. His kingdom is not somewhere in outer space. It is available through the church and every human life can be a part of it. Jesus can free us in the deep depths of our soul. His kingdom is very personal. On this feast of Christ the King, we look at the shape of Christ's kingdom. Its length is eternal, enduring beyond every human kingdom until the end of time and beyond. Its width is universal, big enough to embrace every human being who ever was and ever will be. Its reach is deep and personal into every human life. If we have been far from Christ, next week, the first Sunday of Advent, is a chance to begin to unite ourselves more deeply with him. St Mark's is an interesting place. There's actually a lot of committed, deep, lived out love for God and love for one another. And as you sail forward into what I trust will be a time of growth, May God lead, provide and guide. His kingdom, his truth, his grace are as close as every church, every sacrament, every holy communion. These are the access points into Christ's kingdom of saving truth and lasting life. The power and the peace of Christ the King are here. However, the entry and embrace of his kingdom is up to us. When I was a theological student, not yesterday, I learnt this prayer and I would like to pray this prayer as I conclude preaching. Let us pray. It's called Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you that with your saints I may praise you for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>